Hi, this is Rafiq Suleiman, and you are watching Cloud Simplified. Hi, in today's video, we're going to talk about the benefits of cloud computing. Recently, there have been a lot of reports talking about cloud computing, but mainly talking about cost savings. So in this video, we're going to go through a detailed example. Is cloud only about cost savings or do we have much, much more benefits than just about saving cost when migrating over the cloud? And for us to understand what are the benefits, let's go through an example. So let's see why cloud computing And let's go through an example of an organization who they would like to host a new e-commerce application and they would like to compare. Shall they deploy their application on-premise in a physical data center? Or now they are hearing about the cloud, so they would like to compare between hosting the application on-premise and hosting the application on the cloud. So the first thing, if this organization, they would love to deploy it on premise, the first thing they need to have is this physical proximity that we call it data center. So I need to have this physical proximity, my data center. And in order for me to have this data center, either I need to rent it or I need to buy this physical proximity. And that's number one. And then number two comes something very crucial and a big differentiator on the cloud is how do I do my sizing? And sizing usually is a very challenging task for any pre-sales or solution architect because how do I know the definite size coming into my data center? And usually this is something impossible. So we always try to guess what should be the size that I have and usually we can size in one of the two options. So I can do my sizing I can do my sizing according to the average workloads or I can do my sizing according to the peak workloads. So let's compare both options. Imagine if I have this e-commerce application and I'm expecting maybe 1,000 customers a day. So if I will do my sizing according to the average, I will size my resources like number of servers, amount of storage that I have according to 1,000 customers coming every day. Now the question, what will happen at the times of the peak? And as an example, I'm having this e-commerce application. Maybe I would like to have some uh, massive discounts like Black Friday to attract more customers to coming into my application. So what will happen? This 1000 as a customer, now I am receiving 2000, 3000, maybe 4000 customers a day. So what will happen if I did my sizing according to the average, which is a thousand customers a day, and now I am receiving 3000 or 4000? What will happen to my infrastructure? Definitely, my infrastructure is going to be overutilized. What will happen to my application if my infrastructure is overutilized? Very simply, the application will start to misbehave. So maybe customers accessing my application, my application is reloading frequently, or every time they add something to their shopping cart, at the end in the checkout, guess what? They find an empty shopping cart. And that's why usually, when we used to do sizing, we don't size according to the average because we're not sure what will happen during the peak. I need to be ready. And that's why on premise for me to do the sizing, we used to always size according to the peak and not according to the average. So what will happen here? I am doing my sizing according to the peak. But the important question, how often do I have this peak? Is it every day? Is it every month? Maybe once a month? maybe twice a quarter. So what does that mean? This means I have my resources, I have my infrastructure, and my resources are underutilized, which means that 
I know that I have oversized, but I am okay with this because I want to be in the safe side. I need to make sure I have the enough infrastructure in case I have any spike of traffic. Very good. I did my sizing according to the peak and now I prepared what we call the final bill of material and this is where I have the final number of servers, of racks, of storage that I have. Now this organization they need to place the order and how they can place an order on premise the way they place the order is a capex way and capex way means this is a bulky investment at the beginning and I have seen cases for big enterprises and for public sectors where we have like big data centers I have seen cases of multi-million dollar that is paid completely upfront and now I have prepared my sizing I paid for my infrastructure can I go live with my application and the answer is definitely not because I still don't have any equipment on site so I need to go and I need to wait and now the important question what's the waiting time since I place an order till I have my infrastructure on site I guess this question is now even more challenging especially after COVID because after COVID we have this problem called semiconductors shortage in the market which is causing problems not only for data centers but for almost everything we deal with and if we went through the industry average right now the industry average waiting time right now is from five to six months which means I need to wait five to six months to have everything in my data center and now I waited for six months now can I go live and the answer is definitely not because I still didn't do any racking and stacking for my servers so the next thing I need to go and do racking and stacking so I need to go and take my servers unbox my servers place the racks inside my data center and then do the racking and stacking very good and then connect it to the networking and then spine and leaf architecture like this so I need to do cabling I also need to do tagging and then I need to configure my networking routing and switching subnets and VLANs then I need to go and deploy my virtualization on the server then I can go and deploy my application then test it then go live how long do you think this will take again let me try to be optimistic here and let's say this takes another three months so what does that mean this means as an organization I lost nine complete months with absolutely no business I had everything ready in my sizing but because of the infrastructure and because of the challenge that we have right now in the supply chain and in the market I lost nine complete months with absolutely no business right now let's see the other side of the cloud and how the cloud can solve all of these challenges now the first challenge is do I need to have this physical data center do I need to buy or do I need to rent and the answer is definitely not because you are relying on the physical data centers of your cloud providers and that's the first one and then the second one how about my sizing how do I do the sizing on the cloud and the good news I don't do the sizing according to the peak I do the sizing according to the average so let me explain imagine if your application on average as a minimum needs let's say three virtual servers so this is one server a second virtual server and a third virtual server what was the challenge on premise the challenge what happens at the times of the peak so on the cloud because we have this concept which is called elasticity so with the concept of elasticity it means I am not bounded to my hardware on the cloud 
I can scale out and scale in and also this can be automatically. So at the times of the peak, I can scale out and scaling out very simply means now I can add on the spot extra instances that can be generated for me automatically during the times of the peak in order to absorb this extra load coming into my application. And guess what? What happens after this weekend, like the Black Friday weekend ended? What happens here? This elasticity as a concept can also scale in automatically. And scale in automatically means now, since I no longer need these instances, I can go and I can terminate and decommission these two extra instances. And now, what about the payments? On the on-premise, I paid CapEx, bulky, upfront investment. Now on the cloud, the way of payment, it's called variable expenses. So what do I mean by variable? Variable here means it depends on your usage. So for example, in the first month, I only had three instances. So I only pay for three instances. And now what happens just during this two days of Black Friday of extra sale? Now I have added these extra instances. So what happens here? I only pay for these instances just during these two days. So I don't need to have any wasted resources like what I used to have the case with the on-premise when I did the sizing based on the peak. On the cloud, I size according to the average and if I need more resources on the spot, I can just get these extra resources. And now what was the third one here? The third one was about the waiting time. So after this example, let me ask you this question. What do you think is the waiting time on the cloud? And the answer here very simply, the waiting time on the cloud is very simply in few minutes. So whenever you need any resources on the spot, you can go and access your console and get these extra resources. So you might think about it like this. Maybe this is if I would like to have maybe like one server or a database instance, what if I have a huge application, like 50 virtual servers, I have uh, load balancers, I have security, I have firewalls, I have databases. What will be the case here? Can I also have it up and running in few minutes? And the answer is also yes. Why? Because of this concept called IAC. IAC is infrastructure as a code, which means if I know that I have this as my solution architecture, I can save this architecture as a template. And very simply, whenever I need to deploy it, I can take this template, I can pass it to the service on the cloud, and this service is going to deploy, is going to create all of these services in the correct order just in few minutes. So I will have my complete application up and running in just few minutes. All right, now let's summarize the benefits of cloud computing following the example that we have explained. So definitely the first benefit is cost savings. And why will I save cost? Because first of all, I don't need to rent or I don't need to buy this physical proximity and that's number one. I don't need to pay for any utilities like electricity and like strong air conditioning to absorb all the power and heat from these infrastructure like servers, networking and storage. And I should have cost savings as well because I don't size according to the peak. On the cloud, I can leverage the concept of elasticity so I can size according to the average. And this is how I can do cost savings on the cloud. The second benefit is my team productivity. Because right now, my team, my server administrator, my storage administrator, now I have offloaded 
lot of tasks that they used to do on premise because they used to deal with the physical equipment. Now I don't have any physical equipment. So for example, if I have a server administrator and part of his tasks is to replace in case there is any faulty physical server, for example, so maybe they need to contact the hardware vendor, need to open a support case, wait for one or two days till they get the hardware and then replace the hardware and then put it back in production. Now, in the cloud, my team, they don't need to do any of these tasks because they are dealing with completely virtual equipment, virtual servers and storage as well. So the second one is the productivity of my team and how can team can be much, much more productive. Now, point number three is what we call operational resiliency. And this is very simply because of the way data centers are designed in the cloud. So data centers are designed in the cloud in a very high available and full tolerant way. And they are designed as a cluster of data centers. And this cluster is isolated from each other. So in case there is any disaster that happened in a certain cluster, this disaster is isolated to only this one and the other data centers in the same region can take over and my application will not have any downtime. And this is operational resiliency. Now, point number four, which is in my opinion, is a very, very important point here, is what we call business agility. And what do you mean by business agility? It means how quick I can go live, that's number one, or how quickly I can generate or I can have new versions of my application, for example, uh, to fix the bugs that I used to have. So for the business agility, if I would like to compare it with the on-premise, if you remember, in the on-premise, I need to wait for the hardware. In the on-premise, I was bounded to the hardware that I have. But on the cloud, I'm completely not bounded. And on the cloud, whenever I have any of the resources needed, I can just go for these resources. Another crucial point of business agility is testing. How can I test maybe I have my application and I would like to test maybe a GPU with my application? On premise, how can I do it? On premise, I need to make sure I put and I order this GPU and maybe I have an old server and this old server doesn't support GPU, so I need to order a new generation and then I need to order my GPU, wait for a few months to receive the server and then start testing and maybe it makes sense or not. But on the cloud, another very important part of the business agility is how do I test? So on the cloud, at any certain point of time, if I would like to test maybe a virtual server with the GPU on the spot, I can power on this virtual server, test it. If it makes sense, I can fail over to this server. If it doesn't make sense, I can decommission it and that's it for me. So to summarize, this is why cloud computing and what are the benefits of going into cloud computing? As you can see, and as you have seen from the example, it's not only about cost. Definitely cost is something major and something most of the organizations, they think about it. But if you think about these benefits, it's cost savings is the productivity of my team, operational resiliency for my data centers and for my application, and finally business agility. So I hope you liked this video and I hope that now after this video understand what are the real benefits of cloud computing. It's not only about cost, but it's about the other ones as well. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope the video uh, makes sense to you. Please, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or please let us know in the feedback in the comments, what kind of other videos you would like to see to make cloud simplified as well uh, for you. And if you would like to see more of these videos, please do not forget to subscribe for the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.